Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to revisit one of the favorite pens of mine from 2017, the Jinhao 992. This is how I received them. I got six of them. As you can see from the auction, uh, it was something I couldn't pass up. I've already eyedroppered most of my other ones and I've been enjoying them a lot. So these I got primarily to play around with a little bit. So I think it's interesting how they came uh, labeled. You know, they all have uh, barcodes on them, um, a model number. This one has 6-13-2017. I don't know whether that's the day it was made. And it's a 0.5 millimeter nib, which one would think that would be kind of a, a fine nib. We just grab another one. We can see that, again, that unique number. And this was May 27th of 2017. So we're going to take these out of cellophane and take a close look at them, see how that end looks that uh, potentially could have some cracks where the plug was put in. A cellophane wrap. And I think all of these six colors look great. I had a green one, a smoke one, a clear one, and the brown one, and now I have a blue and an orange one. I got the blue one as part of the set. You know, it, it's just a great set of colors. The colors are nice and vibrant. Let's take a look at the green one. There are some uh, small cracks, but nothing major. You know, we'll do the smoke one. And these are certainly looking better than the first batch of pens that I got. The crystal one was the first one that I eyedroppered, and that one started leaking almost right away. I'm very pleased. These are definitely at least better and as received condition than I got before. So I may not do anything to these. I will see how uh, secure the plugs are. But there's definitely no visible cracks, at least to the naked eye. We may uh, do some uh, close-up work on a loop or whatever. But so far, I'm impressed and I uh, have an interesting future ahead for us in these pens. Take a look at, this is a 992, Jinhan 992 from my first batch. I wanted to eyedropper it. I noticed there's a lot of cracks here at the bottom of the barrel. I used um, the scalpel to just gently remove the plug and for the first time of removing plugs I noticed that this one was glued in. So they have been doing some different things. I'm going to clean out that glue and we're going to fill this up with my Gorilla Crystal Glue that's going to fill up the bottom and cover those cracks. One thing that's important if you're going to use glue on these pens is I suggest getting a, a clear glue. This Gorilla Glue is clear. It's, I've had it in a pen uh, that I've uh, glued up about a month ago and it's, it's survived fine with the ink. There's no discoloration. It doesn't uh, let any ink past it. So we're going to just fill the bottom up through the uh, plug that we removed. I just want to put enough in there to plug the bottom securely and also coat the cracks that are in there, as you can see. Just slowly, you know, squeeze the glue in there. I'm not too worried about a few bubbles now and then. We'll get those out later. Quickly put the plug back in. You don't want the glue leaking out. And now we're going to just agitate it a little bit, twirl it around, just coat that bottom very, very well. And hopefully, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry the same crystal clear color that you see, see there now. The key thing is, is, is this period of time before the glue starts to set up is you just want to make certain that it covers everything. And it came out quite well. I think that's the right amount of glue. It's not going to interfere with the converter if you want to use that later. And it's going to seal the plug and also seal any... Well, it's been a few days since we put clear Gorilla Glue at the end of the barrel on this charcoal 992. 
As you can see, the converter fits fine. I mean, it's a close fit, but it certainly does okay. So filling this end doesn't preclude using a, a converter. But obviously we did that to use as an eyedropper, so we're going to remove the converter. I'm actually going to use an eyedropper rather than a syringe. I figure we might as well stay true to the nature of the beast. We're going to get out the trusty silicone grease. And we're going to fill the threads with grease. And there is an O-ring here, so we're going to make certain some silicone grease gets on the O-ring. So it's always good to prepare that first before you do the inking. It's a tough decision on an ink, but I wanted to uh, put in a grayish type of ink in a gray pen. I haven't used this ink uh, much recently, but uh, Noodlers does some excellent inks and some excellent compositions. So this is the 54th Massachusetts. It's a permanent uh, gray, blue, black, commemorative of the um, Civil War that we had in this country. So we're going to use this ink. Interesting color. We'll see how it works in the pen. I also have the other three 992s that I've inked up as eyedroppers. Um, so we need to do a comparison of how they write. I think it's interesting to show how the different inks that are in there impact the writability. We're going to give this one a pretty good fill because I'm going to use this for a while. And I'm very comfortable now that these pens are pens that you can use for a long period of time. So we filled it up. Just going to clean things out and uh, put the section in. Always good to uh, put the cap back on the ink. You don't want any accidents to happen, especially with a nice permanent ink. So we're just going to screw back in the section that we put the silicone grease on. It only takes two or three turns. Generally make finger tight. No reason to over tighten any of these. So we're going to put it upside down and wait for the ink to make its way into the feed. As you can see, it's showing up pretty quickly already. Looks like it's reached the uh, nib. So we're going to let that set for a few minutes and then uh, put pen to paper. With the writing sample, I need to make a correction in this transparent brown 992. I said it was uh, Robert Oster Gold Antigua, but then I was concerned about the color didn't look quite right, but I checked my notes from my uh, Inkit notebook, and it's actually Rohr and Klinger sepia. So I apologize. I um, I can't redo the video. It's, it's something that you kind of like uh, do in a spur of the moment. So I'm going to put in erotica saying that, you know, instead of gold antigua, it's uh, Rohr and Klinger sepia. Apologize for any confusion that may cause, but um, like I said, it just didn't seem like that was the right color, so I have a correction. 992, I just eyedroppered. This is the first one that I tried to seal the end, and I used a, a silicone adhesive and I came in through the end of the barrel and I touched the side of the barrel with the applicator and so I decided just to make a interesting pattern inside. It has sealed off the end of the barrel. This is the first one I eyedroppered which leaked. This is KWZ Azure number four in it. Very happy with that combo and as you can see I've used about half the ink that was put in there. I've had that well over a month. This is a brown one. This is the one I didn't do anything at the end of the barrel. No cracks, no leaks. Again, it's been over a month and I've used this pen also quite a bit. This has Robert Oyster Gold Antigua. This is a green one that I also filled up at the end with uh, the clear Gorilla Glue. This has also been a, in use pretty heavily for over a month. 
decent amount of ink's been used out of there. And no leaks. Uh, the glue seems to have held up very well to the ink. So that's why I wanted to try a, a Noodler's ink. Again, to give you a variety. And also when we write with these, one of the things that I've been very pleased with and impressed with is the consistent quality of the nibs. So some of these nibs I did some smoothing on and, and a little bit of tuning, but, but not a lot. And this one I did nothing with. So let's um, put nib to paper and uh, take a look at how this uh, performs. First, because I think uh, this also exemplifies the difference of ink nib and paper have on the writing experience. I mean, that's a really dense line. It glides across the paper. Flow is consistent. Um, again, a, a nice writing experience. And I really like this ink in, in this pen. Sometimes you just get a feeling that a certain ink and pen are going to work together. And I'm very pleased with this. So this will definitely go into my uh, daily writing. Just to compare it, we're going to do the clear one, which has the uh, KWZ Azure number 7. This is also very smooth. Not quite as wet as the Mass 54 was, which is interesting. Because I considered this a wet pen before. It does, you know do similar. So again, I've had this pen for um, over a month. I've carried it around with me throughout my pocket, thrown it into a case. Um, it's been in and out of uh, days and, you know, sunlight and heat and air conditioning. And every time I put nib to paper, it writes great. Now we'll go to the brown one, which has Robert Oster, Gold Antiqua. Again, very nice, heavy, saturated line. This also writes consistently. You're not going to get a lot of um, shading. I mean, this ink shades uh, extremely well with a, with a wetter and, a, and also more flexible nib. But it's still smooth. And it writes effortlessly. Too bad I can't spell effortlessly. Now we're going to go to the green pen. So this has Raher and Klinger Alt Gold Grun. It used to be a, a, a green ink that I went to quite a bit, and then I got into Robert Oster Jade, and this one kind of fell by the wayside. Now, this is not as wet in this nib and pen as I had hoped it would be, and I thought it would like really show out the, the shading, which it does a decent job on the shading. But, I mean, I've done everything that I can think of on this nib. You know, I've smoothed it. I've used shims. Uh, I've taken the nib and, and feed assembly. And it's still... It, so this one writes a little bit differently, but I think it's the ink. So, um, until I put another ink in here, we're just going to have to be that as a theory that's not tested. Now we're going to jump right to Toma River paper. And it looks nice on this paper. You're going to get a little bit more shading, which is what you would expect on Toma River. And uh, the flow feels pretty good too.
Now we're going to jump to Gold Antigua. This ink is definitely the darkest it's been in any other pen that I've ever put it in. I have this in about four or five other pens. And this is just very dark, which is interesting. So now we'll get into a blue, just to show you the variety. I mean, this pen, this, this pen and this ink perform excellent on every paper. And it's just a pleasure to use. And now we'll go to the Mass 54. I have to admit that uh, the Noodler's ink is even, uh, this is the best flow and smoothness. I'm looking forward to using this pen, uh, and the color comes out much grayer, I think, on this paper than it did on any of the other ones. Now, this is uh, the smoothest paper that I have, the Clairefontaine 90 pound. Definitely not as wet on this paper as it is on, on uh, even on the Tomo River, which is interesting because this paper is smooth, has a lot of clay on it, but the surface of Tomo River is just unique. And it also doesn't feel as smooth. There's more feedback, but it still looks good. Now we're going to go to the green. It's definitely the lightest of, of all the inks that I have here. And it doesn't sh show off the, eh, I guess the shading's about the same as it is on other ones, but once it dries, it it's just a little bit light, so I'd probably put a Robert Oster um, green in here, or maybe a KWZ green. I'll, I'll decide, but it's going to be a, a month or so until that ink uh, runs out of there. Uh, this, this is still extremely smooth on this paper. You don't feel the feedback like you did with uh, the 54th and it and it looks great I mean that's as much as you can say so now we'll go for the gold Antigua again this is smooth but not as smooth as the Azure number no. four and, and again different papers it's a a different experience. If you had your blindfolds on, you wouldn't know that you were on a, the same pen, same ink, but different paper if you were doing a just a test of the feel. One of the things that's nice about all these pens is they don't need a lot of pressure to write. And that's one of the things that really lend to being able to write for a long time with a pen. So hopefully you've enjoyed this revisit for the fourth time of this uh, series of pens which I think is extremely interesting and good and uh, definitely worth it. I know a lot of my viewers have purchased these pens and the comments I've received have been very very positive so explore with eyedroppers, buy a bunch of them, you know you can really go to town and you can fill them up with ink and they'll last for a couple months you know think about it as like a cheap version of a varsity or and it's not disposable because uh, when you're done with the ink, you can either fill it with the same ink or flush it out and put a new ink in it. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing and, and thanks for, for enjoying and, and, and commenting and, and involved in, in this pen community that we have on YouTube. It's always fun. It's educational. And we all enjoy writing. Till later. Bye.